Christine Walters, a botany and ethnobotany student at the University of Wisconsin at Stevens Point, set out for a trip to Portland, Oregon to visit a friend during the summer of 2008. She wouldn't return home to Wisconsin, and in fact, would never be found. Christine, along with four other missing women that have been labeled the Humboldt Five, would vanish in California's Emerald Triangle, an area in the northern part of the state famous for growing marijuana. What was originally supposed to be a two-week trip to Oregon turned into a more permanent move for Christine, who decided to take a leave from her studies at the University of Wisconsin and remain on the West Coast. She moved to Humboldt County, CA in September 2008. There is very little information about Christine's life in California, however, her mother and other friends and family in Wisconsin reported that her calls became less frequent, and being without consistent work, she would often ask for money. Her mother reported a series of concerning phone calls in the months leading up to her disappearance, and her requests to return home to Wisconsin were returned with, I'm not ready yet. Christine had a genuine love and admiration for the natural world and California's landscape. Having taught yoga and Pilates in Wisconsin, Christine's passion for the environment and living naturally would also bring her to the Green Life Evolution Center. Now defunct, the center was known for its environmentalism and promotion of living a natural, vegan life. On November 7, Christine would attend a tea ceremony or cleansing ceremony sponsored by the center. A private investigator later hired by the family learned that Christine and others at the ceremony had ingested ayahuasca, a South American psychoactive. Known for its potential to invite spiritual revelations, negative physical side effects can include nausea, tremors, and vomiting. Four days later, on November 11, Christine appears naked and disoriented on a couple's porch in rural Arcata, California. While Christine has scratches all over her body and is severely dehydrated, she also appears extremely paranoid and confused. From this point forward, eyewitness accounts remark on Christine's unusual behavior. Unfortunately, it is unclear if Christine's paranoia began directly following the tea ceremony or had been developing over several weeks or months. The couple calls the police and Christine is taken to a nearby hospital where she becomes evasive and refuses to answer questions about her injuries. Instead, she reports that she has walked a long way and that demons were trying to get her. She is released and taken to the Red Lion Inn, where she calls her mother several times and repeats the same concerns about being followed. On November 14, Christine is seen for the last time while visiting a copy center. Having lost her ID, her mother faxes relevant documents to the copy center for Christine. It's her mother's hope that she will be able to book a flight home once she has acquired a new ID. It's also reported by some sources that her father wires her $1,000 at this point, which remains untouched in her bank account. At the copy center, Christine appears disheveled and acts paranoid, she repeatedly looks over her shoulders and asks for directions to a DMV approximately one mile from the copy center. She is never seen nor heard from again and is reported missing by her family on November 17, 2008. Later, Christine's missing backpack, with her identification and cash, is located at Green Life Evolution. Theories I think it's the thought of many that Christine suffered a psychotic break, perhaps triggered by the ayahuasca or some other, unknown drug she consumed, and, unable to get the help she needed, succumbed to the elements or was possibly the victim of an opportunistic crime. It's also possible that Christine was beginning to exhibit symptoms of a previously undiagnosed mental illness that prompted her spontaneous move to California and leave of absence from college, where she was in her third year of study. I did not encounter in my research any reports of Christine's deteriorating mental health prior to November 11. Christine's connection to Green Life Evolution Center has raised red flags for some. Now defunct, a search on the Internet Archive yields a site capture from 2006, at, greenlifefamily.com where they identify themselves as, community gathering place dedicated to sustainability and CONCES, sick, evolution. In a capture from August, 2010, they claim that, your journey to both gold and green pastures begins with your registration in green life and introducing persons to business with green life, it also refers to itself as an MLM, or multi-level marketing, scheme. Many have speculated that the center was linked to cult or cult-like activities, and Christine's connection with them could be suspicious. Is Christine's connection merely a coincidence, or might it have more to do with her disappearance? Likely, we will never know. The Humboldt Five In 2021 Kristen Seavey, host of the podcast, Murder, She Told, recorded a two-part series on The Humboldt Five, 
which includes Christine Walters as well as CV's childhood friend Danielle Bertolini and three other missing women from the area, Jennifer Wilmer, Karen Mitchell, and Sheila Franks. While CV concedes that most of the cases are likely unconnected, Brenda Condon coined the term to bring attention to the number of missing women in the area. Karen Mitchell, who disappeared in 1997, is a suspected victim of Robert Durst, while Bertolini and Franks vanished within seven days of each other in 2014. Wilmer would go missing in 1993 after letting her roommates know she was hitchhiking to a new job at a local farm. She would never arrive, and law enforcement was slow to respond to her case or take it seriously. California's Emerald Triangle is well known for its history of marijuana farming and related crime. It's also an area known for attracting free spirits, a moniker in which CV suggests has contributed to the lack of attention to the missing women who make up the Humboldt Five. CV also believes that a contributing factor to the lack of eyewitness accounts and awareness of the Humboldt Five could be the general hesitancy among the region's residents to talk to law enforcement due to the criminal element that's existed there for decades. If you know anything about the disappearance of Christine Walters, please contact the Eureka Police Department at 707-441-4060 or the Humboldt County Sheriff's Office at 707-445-7251. Like, comment, subscribe for more unsolved cases and horror stories.